Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this Development Digest podcast episode of The Spin. Joining me today is uh, General Secretary of the PGA of Czech Republic, Lucas Tintira. Welcome to the show, Lucas. How are you? Hi, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here and I feel fine. So let's go for that. Great stuff. Let's get stuck in. And today we're going to be narrowing our focus down in this episode on golf in Czech Republic, the role of the PGA of Czech Republic in, in play that it plays in developing golf in the country. And also just like to find out a bit more about yourself, Lucas, as well. Obviously, you're leading that association and leading the development of golf in the Czech Republic. So um, really interested to find out a bit, a bit more about you and your role. Um, so we hope you enjoy the show. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe this episode across your channels. So I'd like to start off first about you, Lucas. So just introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about you your current role with the PGA of Czech Republic and what that sort of involves? As you mentioned, uh, I'm General Secretary of PGA of Czech Republic. Uh, I'm like doing a little bit from everything. So I'm doing the stuff for members, like sometimes just answering the questions, sometimes just hear the voices for them. Uh, Then, uh, I'm doing a little bit for education department, like managing the teachers, all the system, working for a tournament department uh, where I'm solving the problems on site or uh, doing the preparation or I'm a member of a tournament committee. Uh, then sometimes I need to be in business department, like uh, playing golf with our business partners, speak with them and trying to share uh, my knowledge about golf. And uh, sometimes I need to be like you, like doing the marketing and communication, uh, like uh, do, run our website or social media. So uh, I'm I'm like doing a lot of things, just a small things, but sometimes the small things can become a bigger and in the whole thing, it's, a, it's quite a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. You're uh, multi-skilled, involved in lots of areas then, aren't you? Um, yeah. So just give, me, um, just give me a brief introduction about the PGA of Czech Republic then. A lot of that work that you've just mentioned, that's obviously focused on your members, for exam- example, the education and the tournaments. So the PGA of Czech Republic is very much a focus, a member-focused organization, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's more about our members. Yeah, we, we try to, to help them to um, prepare for them like, a, um, I mean, the whole system, like education, tournaments, all the things we are doing just for them to become players or just the, the great teachers, so professional in the business. Yep, yep. So you're there first and foremost for the members. That's excellent. So um, back to you quickly then. Um, how long have you been playing golf? I want to sort of, let's find out a bit about, a bit about your golf game first. Um, well, um, I started playing golf when I was nine-year-old kid. Well, then I was like nine years in a national squad playing like quite good as an amateur. Uh, then I turned pro, well, let's say when I was 22, 23 year old kid, <laughs> young guy who thinks that gonna be the best player in the world, like a tiger in that time. So uh, I, I try to play. I play on professional uh, level, I play the satellite tours or just the local tours um, but after the first year when I wasn't that good that I thought uh, I went to our education system in Czech PGA so uh, after three years I become a full qualified member professional teacher and but well I Actually, I started to play better. <laughs> so I even got through the tour school uh, challenge tour category. So I play on challenge tour. But unfortunately, then I had some, uh, 
some injuries, back, back injuries. So um, then I just start work with the, my golf club and teach the kids. So, well, and now I'm a general secretary of PGA. It's an, it's an interesting story because that's very, sort of very, I think very similar to myself and a lot of people who probably will listen to this is we've always wanted to, to make it playing wise and we perhaps had a really good crack at it. But, um, but you've used those experiences and channeled them in a different way to positively impact the game in a different way. So that's, that's, that's really good. I was going to ask you how your golf game is right now, but before we started this, uh, this recording with the episode, you were saying, as all of us are, we're locked in. It's COVID-19 at the minute. We're not able to play golf and it's really frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's rusty. I mean, I can, uh, <laughs> we, we cannot play. We, can, we just can, uh, well, see some, some tournaments in TV. That's it. So, uh, uh, well, my golf, I think it's good, but I cannot, I cannot uh, try it. If it is that good, that I think. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be like a jackpot, isn't it? A lottery yeah. on when we hit that first tee shot. Where is yeah. the ball going to go? Left, <laughs> right, up, down, backwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. Fingers crossed for all of us. <laughs> um, so, what do you enjoy most about golf? What is it about golf that's kept you in the game for so long, and then also working in it? Ah, uh, well, you know, there is one picture in my head when somebody asked me what I really enjoy about golf. I love to play golf with my dad. It's a sunny summer evening and uh, we just play and chat about life. That's, that's what I really love. And of course, playing European tour, it's always a great challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, similar with us, it's the social aspect, it's the competitive aspect. There's so much to it with golf that that we all yeah. we all enjoy doing right yeah okay perfect got a bit about got a bit about yourself that's great and um, let's let's move on to the actual situation of golf in the czech republic you're really well placed to, as the general secretary to to give me a bit of a background into it so what's what what does golf look like in the czech republic what how many courses sort of golfers members men do you, you know give us a bit of a picture as to what it what it looks like yeah i, I try to i try to uh well, this year, if I'm right, uh, so Czech Golf Federation uh, have 90 years. So we, we know golf in our country for 90 years, let's say. But uh, unfortunately, just because of the socialism and communism, we cannot play this sport a lot. So we try after, let's say we are playing last 30 years, no, like, like normally, let's say normally, <laughs> you know what I mean like that. Uh, so, but we have uh, about 100 golf courses, more than 50,000 players, uh, mm, less than 300 uh, members of PGA. So it's quite everything growing, but it's let's say for last five or seven years, quite stable. So these numbers are really stable. It's not like more growing or going down. It's on the same level for, let's say, five, seven years. So you mentioned there about uh, the effects of communism and socialism on golf in the country. I just want to touch on that really quickly, actually. What... What was the impact that had on it? You weren't able to play golf before then, or? No, well, uh, it was, uh, I cannot say that uh, in English. It's, uh, you cannot play this sport because it's uh, like a West, West sport. It's not a East sport. You need to play hockey. You need to play um, different sports, be great in gymnastics but not in a golf. Golf was like, um, like a, well, my mother even don't know what does it mean that, that word. You know, uh, it was like totally different when I was a kid. That's, re that's really, really fascinating. I didn't know that. Um, so basically because it was a Western sport, 
it was frowned yeah. upon and nobody knew about it. Interesting. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. You learn something new every day. Uh, that, <laughs> that certainly is for me. <laughs> so, and um, so obviously as a member association, um, the PJ of Czech Republic looks after PJ of Czech Republic members. What sort of things are, are your members doing in golf? Are they, are they playing? Are they coaching? What are the typical jobs um, in golf for PJ of Czech Republic members? Yeah, well, our members, our members are uh, mostly teaching. Ninety um, percent of our members are just teaching uh, golf, but they are as well some kind of them. They are uh, uh, doing the managing stuff for clubs. Some of them they are doing some uh, club repairing or doing something for uh, stores. But not. Uh, it's just a couple couple of people from from the uh, from the whole whole members area. But uh, well, then we have uh, tournaments guys who. Well, I can say it's around forty players or something like that who are playing the golf in Czech Republic. So you know, it's uh, it's mostly just a teaching. So you've got a, but you have got a really good base there of people working in slightly different areas and things. So they are, there are, there is a multi-discipline approach to the to the membership. That's great. It's really positive. Um, yeah. You mentioned about golf being quite stable at the moment for the last sort of I think six or seven years. You said, what do you think are some of the challenges or opportunities you will need to do to make that grow again? What's stopping that from going here to here? Yeah. Well. Um, it's a tough, tough question if I know that, so I'll be the, the, the best guy in golf in Czech Republic. But, uh, well, in my point of view, uh, it's not about what all are speaking, it's just about juniors. They, they, they always speak about juniors, juniors, so junior golf, it's really important. I understand that. I used to be a junior golfer and I love the whole system and trying to be the better. Uh, but then you become a professional player and it's a next level and it's really tough. I can say that it's, it's tougher than it, it seems because um, you just spend money and you don't know what's going to be like, like that. So um, it's tough, but in my point of view, it's really important to have uh, positive idols. I mean, positive idols or heroes for that nation or for any kind of sport. So fortunately, we have really, really great LPGA player, Clara Spilkova. And uh, last year, uh, Andre Lieser was a first Challenge Tour player uh, who won the whole ranking. So I think this is the, the positive idols. And in my way, I think we're going to grow up next, next year just because of these names. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned Andre. We've, we've obviously kept an eye on Andre a little bit as well. And we've seen across the PGA of Czech Republic channels that um, he's done really well. And you, you're bang on though, isn't it? It's having some people up here you know who were playing really well that the juniors can look to and use as inspiration right yeah yeah that's true that's what i think it's just about if you see somebody you want to be like like him so they are close to him they can um or they can speak with him and that's 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 how how i think it's working when i was a kid uh, we had uh, great, or we still have this this guy, great hockey player. His name was Jaromir Jagr, and uh, I just want to be like him. So that's that's for me. It's the best way how to to get the people in in a, any kind of sport. Yeah, totally. You can't underestimate the influence of um, of, of, of really high end professional athletes. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so. 
you gave me a little bit of a background into the, the, the PGA of Czech Republic and what you're doing as, as an individual. To, you're being pulled sort of across various different areas. And, but what, is it, um, what sort of uh, tournaments are, are, are you running? Um, what education programs? What are, could you give me a bit more detail about some of the activity that the organization is doing? Uh, well, I told you that uh, we are doing everything like most of the PGAs. Um, we are running our education system, which is like free education system. Uh, even the amateurs can attend this system. We have even some kind of uh, um, agreement with the Czech Golf Federation. So we are, um, we are doing these seminars even for really amateurs who, be, who can become like a then professional members of our association. So that's the, that's the education part. Then we have the tournament part, which is uh, quite really good. I mean, last year wasn't the, the, the perfect year, but it wasn't for anybody in golf, uh, but um, we normally have five tournaments of our local professional tour, which is quite, I mean, for that small country like this, it's quite good. Uh, then we have even a um, pro-am tour, which is like five, six tournaments per year as well. So it's, it's quite interesting that we are uh, for, for a small, with a small, uh, amount of money and small PGA, we are running quite a lot of things like like organization. Yeah, totally. You, you, you'd be what we would say is punching punching above your weight, low low input, big output. Um, yeah, that's um, it's it's fantastic work what you're doing. Um, so, uh, what um, you're obviously overseeing all this and you're working with a, a team. What what has been some of the skills and qualities you feel you've had to develop as an individual to manage all that? Has it been timekeeping? Has it been um, managing individuals? What has been really important for you as the, the well, leader of that organization? It's tough. It's a tough question always to uh, recognize where I'm, in which part I'm not good. Uh, as you said, I'm not the perfect guy with the timing or uh, doing the, all these things. I used to just play golf, so it's tough for me, but I'm learning. Then what I uh, think the most important thing for me, which I need to be better, it's uh, politics. Uh, I've been just just guy who is playing golf. So sometimes I just say what I feel, yeah? I'm not, uh, I'm not telling like I wanted to do a different way or something like that. I'm just saying what I feel and it's not the best way uh, how to get the things like you want. So I need to be sometimes a little bit more like... Um, Diplomatic. Yeah, that's, that's the right word. <laughs> Very honest. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> we all, but we all have our flaws, don't we? I suppose. <laughs> um, so you mentioned about the collaboration in the education side with the, the Czech Golf Federation. Is that a recent development, or has that been going on for quite a while? Um, uh, if if I am right, years ago. Uh, Czech Golf Federation try to develop their own um, education system for amateurs. But then we had some agreement with them that we're going to do this education for them. So it's quite now, I think it's, it's logical why the, we are here to, to develop the professionals. So it's good to develop these things or these people for them. Yeah. So I think it's it's not a modern way, but it it's here. Let's say for five five six years. I'm not right. Uh, I'm not in this totally perfect, but I think it's it should be like that. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that's that 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 element of collaboration is really important. We're seeing it in some other countries, uh, Sweden, for example, where the PGA has a good relationship with the federation, and it's important. You're seeing the benefit because you're getting amateur golfers to come through the PGA of Czech Republic's education program, right? And it's it's increasing your exposure. It's developing more individuals. Then it has an impact wider field on golf, doesn't it? So I, I really like that. That's great. Um, yeah. So just to close things off then, finally, just want to talk a bit about the, the CPG. And we obviously, uh, uh, you're a member country um, of this, the Confederation of Professional Golf. Um, what, what sort of value and benefit do you see uh, as a result of being part of this collective of, of member countries internationally? Um, well, I mean, for our members, it's really important that we can uh, play and teach abroad so it's a great value for any pga who is a member of cpg so that's that's the the main thing but for me as a general secretary it's really important to to be in touch with you guys to uh get information to get a modern view uh to to see that uh, you are doing like uh, some effective things and uh, you are just uh, influencing me so so i'm trying to just copy what you do for uh, for a while so for me it's really good to be a part of cpg that's great that's perfect that's that's really good to hear and it's good to see that we're having a, a positive impact on you and and your your organization um what more could we do? You know, moving forward, we talk about that barrier. We want to create some idols in a, in a long-term view. What could the CPG do to help, um, to help you achieve your own objectives? Uh, it, again, it's tough to answer this uh, because I don't know. I don't know. I, I can say I don't know. But I think that you are doing a great job. You are developing some education part you are doing the, the tournament part uh, uh well and i'm looking forward for a new platform so probably that the platform go, gonna be the the best way for us and for any pga and we're gonna be even stronger yeah that's that's actually a really good example just just for um in case uh, listeners aren't aware we're in the process of developing a digital platform for our members that will hopefully be able to allow you to improve the efficiency of your business, administer, help your members, lots of different capabilities and functions. So it's good to hear that's, that's valued. Um, great. No, that's, that's perfect. That's um, really, really good to get a bit of insight into, into you, Lucas, and, and your work with the, the PGA. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed it as well to the listeners. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? Would you like to say goodbye to everybody, Lucas, before we leave? <laughs> yeah, well... Goodbye and hope we're going to play uh, soon golf. So hopefully we're going to see on, on, uh, on grass, not just here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, 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 as we're speaking right now, it's, uh, it's January and uh, February, sorry, now, and uh, everybody's in lockdown. So fingers crossed over the next few weeks, we'll be able to play a bit of golf and uh, dust those cobwebs off and rust off the golf clubs, right? <laughs> Great. No, thank you for your time, Lucas. Really appreciate it. Um, I hope you're doing well and uh, we'll speak very soon. And to all the listeners, I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in ne the next episode of The Spin. Thank you and goodbye. Oh.